Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video on how people are converting these ceiling fan motors over to wind generators. So now taking apart the ceiling fan isn't too difficult. You have some screw bolts here, screws, that go in on either side. And then you're going to take all of them out, plus remove all the electrical components in here, the light switches, everything like that. You don't have to take this part off, but you need to take the all the parts that were on here. So there was a washer on there and some nuts on this particular ceiling fan, this bracket, and there's a couple nuts on there. So they're going to have to be removed. And once you get all those parts off of there, then you have to pry this apart because the bearing is is stuck into the um, the casing here so now I'll just pull apart the ceiling fan motor so now the motor works exactly the same as the induction motor but it's a low rpm motor so we have coils that are wound a little differently and you can see there's one set two sets and then this little set here that this coil here would be your high speed medium and then this is the very low speed but that's just i'm just guessing i haven't done any research on these so now i'm guessing that they're wound in a wave configuration so that one coil is wound clockwise the next coil then is counterclockwise and then so on and so forth around the whole stator and then we have an alternating current going around the actual coils here and then that makes the the rotor rotate so now how they're getting this to work is they're just taking out the rotor. So get rid of that. You won't need that. And then by placing some magnets around this wheel here, you the motor will work as a generator. So as an alternator, actually. I got some magnets out of a DC motor. It's out of a GM car, this heater blower fan. So there's four magnets inside of here. So I just pounded them off of this uh, housing. I just put the magnets onto the housing of the ceiling fan motor and I've just taped them on. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I'll just spin it lightly so you can see the needle jumping up and down. So every time it induces a coil, then there's a positive and a negative voltage being produced. So we have our alternating current. So as I turn this, our alternating current is being produced. So you can see it doesn't take much to, to have the needle jump around. And I'll put this on the voltage, so 10 volts, and I'll spin this thing up, and then we'll see what voltage that we can get out of this. So a little over 5 volts, and I'll try to crank her right up so almost I'm almost getting 10 volts if I really get this thing spinning so almost 10 volts that's just with two magnets so now what I'll do is I'll hook up a little LED light here just to show it working okay so I'm just going to give it a spin the LED lights are hooked to the ceiling fan generator here and we'll just give it a spin now you can notice that it's flickering and it's flickering because it's an alternating current and also, it's it's only operating at a low frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this rectifying diode on, and then that'll sort of even out the, uh, the flickering. Okay, so I'll give it a spin now. And you can see it's much smoother now. It's much better. Now, the only thing is we're only powering six LEDs there, so it, it's very uh, low wattage output. So now, in my opinion, this small ceiling fan motor really isn't worth converting over to a generator uh, because of cost of the magnets. Um, now this motor only had an input wattage of 60 watts max so you probably wouldn't be able to get even 60 watts out of it so it really isn't uh, a practical conversion but if you can get your hands onto a commercial sized ceiling fan motor the higher the wattage of the ceiling fan motor input, the better generator you can build. Now I took the capacitor that was out of the motor and I've just hooked it back in with the output and I'm just trying that to see if it works better. I'm not sure, but it seems to be holding the voltage longer. So 
it's actually better to put that capacitor in there, I think. So of course the generator will work in both directions, clockwise or counterclockwise. So that's good for a generator that you can build without a propeller, one that just sits on the ground and it can just spin and then if the wind changes it'll it'll produce in both directions. So you can see that it works. Now this is just an example of how to do it and it's really easy. Um, for the wiring, what I've done is I've just gone through the wiring here. There's, there's a whole bunch of wires you have and there's also a capacitor in here. So now I went through the wires and I've only used two of the wires that I got the greatest amount of, of wattage out of. That's probably out of that first large coil. Uh, but of course you could go through the wires and try to wire it differently so that you get a higher wattage out of it. So now you can do this with other motors like an induction, uh, regular induction motor. Uh, but this one here is optimal because it's already a low RPM motor. So it doesn't have to spin very fast to produce a voltage. So now this is the easiest way to convert the ceiling fan over to a generator is just to place your magnets around the housing here. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your magnets in here and you're going to put a south pole magnet and then the next one's going to be a north pole and then a south pole, north pole, and you're going to evenly space them out around this. So I'm not an expert at converting motors over to generators, but I have tinkered around with this uh, for a while. And so I've never converted one of these motors over to a generator yet but I would probably put a magnet everywhere you see an insulator. So on this particular motor here, there's 14 insulators. So if you had 14 magnets inside of this housing here, I think that would give you an optimal uh, amount of wattage out of the unit. This magnet here was directly over top of an insulator. Then once you move the magnet, it's going to then induce this this coil here so induction is going to happen in this coil here and then it's going to it's going to stop here and then the next magnet so each one is going to then have a magnet passing over it at once so we'd have uh, a north pole and then a south pole passing over top of each coil all at once now i'm just assuming that would be the best way to do this uh maybe 14 magnets is too much in here but it, I, you'd have to try it out. Like I said, I haven't. I only have tried it with two magnets so far. So you're going to have to do a little research and try to figure out the optimal amount of magnets to put in here. So the idea with this conversion here is just to make this a very simple conversion of a ceiling fan motor to a low RPM wind generator. And without unwinding all these coils and changing the configuration around... It, it, this is the easiest way to do this, just to put the magnets onto the housing here, and then away you go. So now I'm not sure if people are actually doing a conversion to the stator here and unwinding these coils and then wrapping in a thicker gauged wire. So I have some wire here that's a little thicker, and that could be then wound in instead of this very, very thin coil here, uh, which this motor used to run on 120 volts. Um, I have a few different sizes, this wire here, and then I have also uh, this 14 gauge, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the 14 gauge. If you did want to modify it, you could pull out these little segments here. You can see these pieces are just pushed in, and then you'd have to pull these out with a pair of pliers, all these little segments here, these little insulators, and then you'd have to then take the coil out. So you'd have to unwind every coil, all these coils here, and then rewind in your new coils. Uh, but I don't think it's worth the time. So that's basically how people are converting these ceiling fan motors over to wind generators. And thank you for watching.